Hi everybody, it's Mr. Martin here from PE, uh, and I'm going to be reading to you the final chapter, chapter nine, which is one minute six. But before I do that, let's have a quick recap of chapter eight. And in chapter eight, you'll remember that Tomo remembers when he enlisted with Charlie, he stood up tall, trying to pass for 17, and Charlie introduced them as twins. Tomo and Charlie meet Sergeant Horrible Hanley at their training camp in France. Hanley has a profound dislike of Charlie, so Charlie broke ranks and charged at Hanley, shouting at him and letting him know exactly what he thought of him. As punishment, he is ordered to field punishment number one, which means being tied to a gun wheel and left there. All right, so let's now move on to chapter nine, one minute to six. I tried to close my mind to what is happening this minute to Charlie. I just tried to think of Charlie as he was at home, as we all were, but I can still see in my mind all the soldiers leading Charlie out onto the field. He is not stumbling. He is not struggling. He is not crying out. He is walking with his head held high, just as he was after Mr. Munnings caned him at school that day. Maybe there's a lark rising or a great crow wheeling into the wind above him. The firing squad stands at ease, waiting. Six men, their rifles loaded and ready, each one wanting only to get it over with. They will be shooting one of their own, and it feels to them like murder. They try not to look at Charlie's face. Charlie is tied to the post. The Padre says a prayer, makes the sign of the cross on his forehead, and moves away. It is cold now, but Charlie does not shiver. The officer, his revolver drawn, is looking at his watch. They try to put a hood over Charlie's head, but he will not have it. He looks up to the sky and sends his last living thoughts back home. Present, ready, aim. He closes his eyes and he waits. He sings softly. Oranges and lemons say so the bells of St. Clement's. Under my breath, I sing it with him. I hear the echoing volley. It is done. It is over. With that volley, a part of me has died with him. I turn back to go to the solitude of my hay barn, and I find that I am far from alone in my grieving. All over the camp, I see them standing to attention outside their tents, and the birds are singing. I am not alone that afternoon either when I go to Walker Camp to collect his belongings and to see where they have buried him. He would like the place. He looks out over a water meadow down to where a brook runs softly under the trees. They tell me he walked out with a smile on his face as if he were going for an early morning stroll. They tell me that he refused the hood and that they thought he was singing when he died. Six of us who were in the dugout that day stand vigil over his grave until sundown. Each of us says the same thing when we leave. Bye, Charlie. The next day, the regiment is marching up the road towards the Somme. It's late June, and they say there's soon going to be an almighty push and we're going to be part of it. We'll push them all the way to Berlin. I've heard that before. All I know is that I must survive. I have promises to keep.